Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation. We have x to the fourth power plus 4x cubed equals negative 27. And we're going to solve for x values. Can you solve this problem? Yes, we're going to use u substitution to solve this problem. So that's going to be my first method. Let's go ahead and set x equals u minus 1, which means u equals x plus 1. But since our equation is in x, we're going to go ahead and replace x with u minus 1. When you do that, when you do that, you're going to get something nicer. Because what's going to happen is u to the third power is going to cancel out. So if you expand this, you're going to get u to the fourth minus 4u cubed plus 6u squared minus 4u, that's 4u, plus 1 plus 4u cubed minus 12u squared plus 12u minus 4 equals negative 27. And as you can see here, u cubed is going to cancel out, leaving us with a quartic equation without the cubic term, which is a depressed quartic. u to the fourth minus 6u squared plus 8u plus 24 equals 0, after rearranging all the terms. Now, at this point, we can try RRT, which is rational root theorem, look at factors of 24, or we could use the quartic formula, or we can try to factor it. Obviously, quartic formula is pretty complicated. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's set this expression equal to the product of two quadratic factors, such as u squared plus au plus b, and u squared minus au plus c. Now, why did I pick plus au and minus au, first of all, we want to get rid of the u cubed. So that allows us to get rid of the u cubed. And it's nice because that way we're going to have to deal with fewer terms. Or if you don't do that and set the coefficient of u cubed equal to zero, you're going to get to the same thing. But this is faster. So after you expand everything, you're going to get a system of equations. So here's what you're going to get from here b plus c minus a squared equals negative 6, ac minus ab equals 8, and bc equals 24. Again, you could go on the factors of 24 and test it out, but instead of guess and check here, let's go ahead and try to solve this. So here's what you can do, and this is pretty standard with quartic equations after you get rid of the cubic term. You can write the b plus c as a squared minus 6, and then here you can factor out an a and divide both sides by a. So in other words, this becomes a times c minus b equals 8. And then after division by a, you're going to get c minus b equals 8 over a. And now you've got a system, a good system. And if you add these two equations, the b is going to cancel out. You're going to get 2c or not 2c and then 2b or not 2b. And then by division, uh, or upon division by 2, you're going to get the values of b and c in terms of a. Let me tell you what they are without further ado. You're going to get c equals a cubed minus 6a plus 8 divided by 2a, and b equals a cubed minus 6a minus 8 divided by 2a. And then use these in the third equation, which is bc equals 24. Obviously, this looks pretty complicated, but one thing that makes it easier is the fact that these two are actually kind of conjugates. If you think about this, these two terms are the same. So it's kind of like they make up difference of two squares when you multiply them. So again, that's going to be a lot of work and you're going to get a six degree, a hexic equation, but then you can use substitution. So here's what's going to happen after substitution. You're going to get something like this. And then you're going to bring, uh, I think you're going to have a negative 96 a squared here. And then from here, you can find the a values, obviously, but you can go ahead and replace a squared with another variable d and put everything on the same side, right? And then that's going to give you something like this, d cubed minus 12d squared minus 60d minus 64 equals 0. Obviously, when you add 96 to positive 36, that should be a minus 36, I think. Anyway, so from here, you're going to get d equals 16 and a equals plus minus 4. And then by using the a value, you can go ahead and plug it in and find the b and the c values. 
and you end up with the factors and find the solution from there. Okay, so I'm going to leave that part as an exercise for you and I'll talk about an alternative method. Okay, but from this point on, that should be pretty straightforward because all you have to do is plug in A here and here, find the B and C values, and then go ahead and plug in. I mean, I can, I can give you the factors, I guess. So you're going to get something like this. If A is equal to 4, then C should be 6 and B should be 4 as well, I think. So this should give you U squared plus 4U plus 4 multiplied by U squared minus 4U plus 6. And you can definitely check this out because uh, definitely 4 times 6 is 24. And if you look at the coefficient of U cubed, it's going to be 0. If you look at the coefficient of U squared, you're going to get 6 plus 4, which is 10 minus 16. 10 minus 16 is going to be negative 6 u squared. So everything will be satisfied and you'll get the u values from here because by solving this you get the u values. But are we looking for u? Yeah, no, we're not looking for u. Don't worry about it. We are looking for x. So once you find the values of u, you can plug them in and find the x values. But notice that from here we only get one real value because this is the only one. The other one is going to give us complex solutions, which is fine. You can go out and work them out. But this gives us u plus 2 squared equals 0, which implies that u is equal to negative 2, right? But what is u? Well, x is u minus 1, so we're just going to subtract 1 from this value to find the x value. So x must be negative 3, and that is the only real solution. How is that possible? Because we got a perfect square, that's why uh, we got this result. Okay, cool. Now, let's go ahead and look at an alternative method, which is kind of nice, obviously. This is not always applicable, but it's always worthwhile to check. So suppose f of x is defined as x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. Let's go ahead and differentiate it. It's worthwhile to check the maxima and minima in these scenarios. 4x cubed plus 12x squared. And then set it equal to 0. Factor for x squared, you're going to get x plus 3. And then make a table. In our table, we're going to have a couple rows like this. First row, the top row is going to be x, this is going to be f prime, and this is going to be f. There are two roots, 0 and negative 3, for our derivative, but 0 is a double root, so you can put an extra line there, which means the sign at 0 is not going to change, because you're not going from positive to negative, because this is always um, non-negative. Make sense? And I'm going to start here, uh, obviously, uh, near negative infinity, I mean near infinity, it's positive, it's not going to change here, and then it's going to change at negative 3. So our function is going to be decreasing and then can increase and increase. So what's going to happen at 0? Don't worry about it, it's fine. It's going to continue to increase going through 0, 0, right? And But this is good because it gives us a minimum at negative 3. So what is so significant about uh, minimum at negative 3 is if you evaluate f of negative 3, remember our function was x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. If you plug in negative 3, you're going to get 81 minus 4 times 27, which is 81 minus 108, which is negative 27. Uh-oh, this is the exact value that we are looking for. So at x equals negative 3, we get negative 27, which is the minimum the value of the function, and that's a unique solution. In other words, we have a horizontal tangent at that point, so x equals negative 3 is the only real solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.